What's up? It is Cody from the Keepers of Nerdum. How y'all doing today? I thought today would be a fantastic day to take a little sneak peek into one of my favorite games that I've discovered this last summer and really been playing pretty hardcore, Warhammer 40k. And I always knew it would be a pretty costly thing to get into, and it, that's true. But it's also one of those things that once you have your faction picked out and you really build it, then unless you go into a whole nother faction, you are, you've got a beautiful, crazy thing to focus in on. What I, I have to laugh, by the way, that, you know, I play Necrons, as you can tell right here, but like the artwork from this book makes it look like we are straight up just zombies when actually that's not really entirely the case. They are zombies in the sense that they rise back from the dead, but yet they aren't zombies in the sense of, because it looks like almost they have organic matter at this point, like what this looks like. But when you study out their lore, the Necrons are fascinating because they are one of the oldest races that are still around along with the Eldari. And the orcs are kind of there as well, but um, they, they have changed quite a bit quite drastically since their inception. And so <clears throat> one of the interesting things about, <coughs> excuse me, the Necrons is that they were at one point a like flesh and blood blood race, and they, unfortunately for them, traded their souls for living forever. And so it's always this interesting question of: Are the Necrons still actually alive, or are they just machines? And it's it's a tough thing. It's it's a really fascinating thing. That's what kind of attracted me to them was. Honestly, just the resurrection stuff was really cool, but also really just the question of, well, are they, are they alive? Are they actually the case of what's, you know, what are they exactly? And when you study them out, they actually had quote unquote gods that they not necessarily worshiped, but had actually just given them power and given them these, these flesh, you know, these, these living cyborg bodies and it's it's really an interesting faction because they are so bizarre, they're so weird, and so different from everybody else because they're so old. Uh, one thing about their faction that is just not accurately represented, but I think it's kind of interesting to note, is that they, really with their technology, they should be one of the most powerful yet like the most powerful race in the entire galaxy, and yet they're not. They're just not, and just gameplay-wise. It's kind of interesting. Like, according to what's described about their weapons and the things that they have, it sounds like they literally should just be able to one-shot anything, and yet doesn't actually play out like that. And part of that's gameplay-wise. We'll talk a little bit about that. Uh, Armor of Contempt is a big reason for that. And so today I wanted to go into and do a little bit of a review just for two uh, pieces of our faction. The troops options for the Necrons. You know, they're not the uh, Imperium of Man by any means, but... One of the things to note is that they are the big faction for 9th edition. And quite frankly, they are just fascinatingly beautiful. I love the skeletal features, but it's also cyborgs, really. And not even really cyborgs, because there's nothing actually inside of them that's organic. So they are straight up a robotic body. And that's the beauty of it. And I'll show off of a few of my artworks for this that I have, you know, not drawn, but created and painted. And so today I thought, you know, instead of going through every single thing, I wanted to talk about the Codex and specifically the troop faction selections for the Necrons. And the first troop that we're going to talk about is actually the most basic one. The Necron Warrior. And as you can see, these are two versions of Necron Warriors that I have. I actually ended up going with more this style right here of the, the black with blue highlights and then silver uh, internals and occasionally some, some bronzing as well. And I switched over to this type of gun. We'll talk about each of those guns as well. And this color scheme, actually, I went more towards the, the blue after I decided that this wasn't what I wanted. So I've got two of these guys carrying this gun that are very differently painted than the rest of my guys. And so I've labeled them as R2-D2 and C-3PO because ended up with a gold and a blue. And then after that, I realized what I'd done. And it made me chuckle. And usually when people see them, they kind of laugh because usually they're the first ones to go. And you'll see why. Because gameplay-wise, they're not very good. But we're going to talk about the Necron Warriors and also the Immortals. And which one's better and why and or do they complement one another? 
And so there are two weapon options as well for the Necron Immortals. And as you can see, let me see if I can get it in focus. And it's struggling with this guy over here. His, there we go, his shoulders. I actually put on their eye, or their head that goes with the, um, the death marks instead of the normal one for most of them because I just thought the death mark head looked way, way cooler. Just that, that singular eye. Plus, I like the idea of their sniping, and you'll see why. So, we'll talk about what they have in here in the, the book, but also one thing I wanted to mention before we get into the book fully is just point values because one of the things about Warhammer 40k is it's a living game that it continues and that's the beautiful thing you'll see right here the troop slot right up there uh troops these are these things of cost I don't know that there's any extra cost now on Tesla Carbine I don't believe so and so you don't pay any extra cost which honestly is a it's a worse gun than the other thing but according to this book these cost 17 points per model with a two point cost up for tesla carbines and 13 points for necron warriors but the game is a living game and so the updated thing is there's no point cost for these guns because they're, they're not very good and these are dropped by one point which doesn't sound like a lot but when you can have 10 models all of a sudden that's 10 extra points to put towards something else unfortunately these have never dropped any and I don't know that they should have a points drop. I think what they should have is a range increase on guns. So let's talk about this because this stuff is still stayed up to date. And I think that's the, the beautiful thing. We're going to talk through uh, just the stats of each of these troop types, why they're good and for what reason. The Necron Warriors, okay, the six power we're not going to worry too much about. But what's interesting is this can have up to 10, uh, minimum 10, up to 20 in a blob. So essentially, in this game, you have units of characters, or in this case, you know, units of models, I should say. And so in this case, you have to have a minimum of 10 Necron Warriors or 20. And usually it's a better idea to take 20. And the reason being is because of their resurrection. They are fascinatingly powerful for this. And so they're just names, Necron Warrior. We go through their stats. If you played Warhammer 40k at all, you'll know these stats pretty simply. I'm going to turn this just a little bit because it's trying to focus and it's just slightly sideways, so it's struggling. So, there we go. All right. We've got 5-inch movement with a 3-plus weapon skill. What that means is this, that the weapon skill is their close-range combat. So, on a 3 and higher, they will hit and then they have to... Confirm that they deal damage. Ballistic skills three and higher as well. Um, when you get to the twos and higher, that's those are the the sweet spots because those are amazing. Uh, they only have a strength of four, so whenever they're attacking, if they're the thing they're attacking has a toughness of four, then they roll at a fifty percent chance to damage. So first off, you roll against your ballistic skill. So you always roll twice to to hit and then to damage. So your ballistic skill is three and higher. So every three and higher then goes to the next stage. If you have a strength of 4 against a toughness 4, you have to roll 4, 5, and 6. If you have a strength 4 against a toughness 3, you get to go 3 and up. And if you double it, so if they have only 2 toughness, say in that case, then you get to do anything but a 1, so 2 and up. But if your strength is 4 and their toughness is 5, then all of a sudden you're hitting on 5s and 6s. And if they have a double, your t their, their toughness is double your strength, then they get to have everything but a 6 miss. So the amount of wounds for a Necron Warrior is one. And what's really fun is at first when I saw this, I was like, man, these are terrible because in the uh, Recruit Edition box and the Command Edition, Elite Edition, all those, they just have a very simple card that misses out on some of the abilities and stuff that they have. And their abilities aren't very much, but their abilities are huge. They, they change everything for them, just reanimation protocols alone. And so first off, we've got one wound but they, they can come back, and it's crazy. Their attacks in close quarters combat is, is one. Leadership of 10, they are going to start failing leadership saves after, you know, 9 or 10 die pretty quickly. And their saves only have 4 and higher. So normally, if something attacks them that has no armor pierce penetration, they save on a 4 and up, which is, is really cool. But often with the armor piercing, they can get it to the point where they get no save. That's okay. It's it's part of it's just part of how it works. So first off, let's talk about this for just a second. We have two guns here. The first gun is the Goss Flare. This is what R2D2 here is holding. 
The Gauss Flare is the longer of the two weapons, and it is this top weapon right here, the 24-inch range weapon. Now, it has 24 inches rapid fire one, meaning if it's within half range, it can actually do two shots. At strength four, so it's still the same strength as its the model, AP minus one, so it will armor pierce against the save by one. So if they had a four plus save, they'd go up to a five plus with one damage. Now, the reason I actually was bummed out about R2-D2 and C-3PO is because of what happened here, that I had changed them over to, mm, that's pretty, to the Goss Reapers. Now, these are a newer thing in the, the Codex and whatnot, and I think they were in 8th edition as well, but it's not. Some of the older models of the Necron Warriors don't have Goss Reapers. These Reapers only have 12 inches, and that's the one downside is they're very, very short range. Assault 2. This means they always get two shots if they're within range. You can also advance and still shoot with these guns, which is awesome. But here's where it gets crazy. Their strength is five. Now, one extra strength doesn't seem like a lot, but a lot of infantry units are toughness four. So all of a sudden, you hit, get to wound on a three and higher. So hit with a three and higher, wound on a three and higher. Just makes more things go through. And plus, the armor penetration is minus two instead of minus one. So the save goes up even higher to make sure the damage goes through. It's only one damage. But with a Necron Warrior Blob of 20, that's potentially 40 shots into something. And that's insane. That is the crazy stuff. And that is uh, that is fun. Those are the moments where you go, yeah, this is, this is going to be bad. Now, Armor of Contempt has really hurt them because they weren't one of the top tier factions by any means, the Necrons. But Armor of Contempt just basically means most of the, the humanity factions, other than like the, the little normal humans of the Militarum have armor of contempt so they they get a plus one to their save so it negates one of these armor penetration but at least a minus one is better than zero at this point and that's that's the case so the one weakness of the goss reaper is just its range not very good now reanimation protocols it you know what let's let's just go through it really fast because i i don't want to lead you wrong on this reanimation protocols uh this is really fun Okay, so each time an enemy unit shoots or fights after it makes its attacks, if any models in this unit were destroyed as a result of those attacks, but this unit was not destroyed, this unit's reanimation protocols are enacted, and those destroyed models begin to reassemble. So, after a an enemy unit fires all of its weapons and it's done, or fights and it's done, and you still have Necron Warriors or anything with reanimation protocols, you still have some part of that, that unit, so not everything in the unit died, then you get to enact reani reanimation protocols. So that's why the, the 20 are just, they're just better. Because then you have more odds of getting this. So then each time a, a unit's reanimation protocols are enacted, make reanimation protocol rolls for that unit by rolling a number of D6s equal to the combined wounds characteristics of all their assembling models. And so Necron Warriors only have one wound, which is actually really, really good for this. Because then you get one die per model destroyed, and how many wounds they had. And so each Necron Warrior goes down, you get one. But why that sounds bad, you're like, I don't get very many dice. The reason being, it's easier to get them up. So each reanimation protocol roll of five and higher is put into a pool. The reanimation protocol can never be modified by more than plus one or minus one. Now, you have to reanimate on a five and higher, typically. That's the rules. Um, if the number of dice in that pool is greater than or equal to the wounds characteristic of any of the reassembling models, select one of those models to be reanimated. A reanimated model is added back to its unit with its full wounds remaining, can only set up with an engagement range of enemy units that are already within engagement range of the reanimated model's unit, and cannot, if it is your charge phase, be set up closer to any enemy units that are targets of a charge declared by its unit this phase. No longer counts as having been destroyed for the purposes of morale tests this turn. And then you reduce the number of dice in that pool by a number equal to the wounds. And so you just keep going till you can't resurrect anything. Most of us just roll the big, you know, that use it. Just roll an entire big section of them. And that's the reality of what we do. Uh, first off, one big thing right here is their number is legion. Reroll reanimation protocol rolls of one made for this unit. So they succeed only in fives and sixes, but that first time they roll, if they see a one, they can re-roll it. And so all of a sudden, these, these guys, they don't have a great save, but they can come back. They can, they can save out of something, potentially. Then, if they don't, they can reanimate, as long as the, the whole unit doesn't get destroyed. 
So then they can reroll reanimation protocols and they get to reroll that, that one. And that's, this is fascinating, right? They also have access to command protocols like just about everything in the codex at this point, which is really cool because we'll talk about those maybe in another video. But these things resurrect really, really well. There are some things that have three or four wounds. And so it's really, really hard to resurrect them. Really tough, really tough. And so the Necron Warriors are a fantastic, awesome unit to use. Uh, they don't have a great range, but where they, where they really shine is in their... Just with supplementary characters. Because one of the things that you have to have, for example, is that if they get into close combat, they are terrible. And the Royal Warden comes into like the uh, the recruit edition of the 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 intro box, and one of the things that it says is adaptive strategy. And it says in your command phase, you can select one friendly Dynasty core unit within nine inches of this model until the end of that turn. That unit is eligible to shoot and declare a charge within a turn in which they fell back. And so it, it the Royal Warden is a perfect supplementary to the Necron Warriors because they usually like to get up into the faces of stuff because they have ob Objective secured, regardless of what faction you choose in the Necron dynasties. And they're, they're just really good for this. Because they, they get up in there, but once they get in close range combat, they, they're, not, they're not good. They are not a thing you want to use for close range combat. And so, overall, I love them, but they're, they have a very specific role. It's just survive and take time that your opponent is dealing with them and going, why can't I kill these things? And they just keep coming back over and over again. Now, Immortals are a little bit different story. You can only get up to 10 of them, five minimum. These are not your frontline characters. Okay, five inch move as well, three, three as well, strength same as well, toughness five though. That changes things drastically because that, that keeps them safe a lot longer than it should. And it's crazy. Their wounds are only one as well. And again, it's because they have reanimation protocols as well. And that's okay. They they are fun for that, and it's it's entertaining when they get back up because they are a very very obnoxious infantry unit. They do get two attacks in close range, but again, their close range is not good. They're the same as the Necron Warriors as far as close range attacks, but they do get two instead of one, so they can actually have the same amount of attacks as the Necron Warrior Blob. Their leadership is ten, three plus save, so they do get a plus one to their saves here. Now. One of the things that they don't have the their numbers legion with the reroll for the ones on their reanimation protocols, unfortunate. But the two guns that we have here, let's talk about first off the bad gun. Um, there's a stratagem for this gun that I why I have one guy with a gun just to use it, but I'm kind of getting to the point where I go, I don't know that I want to use that stratagem anymore. And this right here, that's interesting. It's kind of got like a brownish on his arm right there because of the the wash I put on him. Uh, he's carrying the Tesla Carbine. The Tesla Carbine only has a 24-inch range, Assault 2, so it always gets to make two shots. Each time an attack is made with this weapon, an unmodified hit roll of six scores two additional hits. So you can get a lot of hits out of this. But where it just struggles is it is five strength, so that's good. Zero AP, one damage. The reason that most people go for the Goss Blasters, which it's funny, the Necron Warriors have the Goss Reaper, which is essentially a smaller version of this gun. Uh, the Goss Blaster has Rapid Fire 1, so if it gets within half range, it can fire two shots, 30-inch range, so within 15 normally. If you take Mephrit Dynasty, you can get up to 3-inch bonus, which doesn't sound like a lot, but an extra inch and a half for the double shot can help. Strength 5, AP minus 2. This is where it really shines, and 1 damage, the AP minus 2. These guys, they're designed because of the range here to stay further back, which is hilarious because you've got Necron Warriors that can get up in their faces and some other units that just hold things off while the Immortals are sitting in the back constantly just harassing the enemy. And they're, they're not as easy to kill because of their Toughness 5. That Toughness 5 just changes everything. It's Whenever I play against like uh, the Deptus Custodius, I believe most of them have at least Toughness 5 on all their troops of memory serve. I think all of them do, other than like the the ladies that you can get that are the very specialized units in their their force. And so this Toughness 5 just all of a sudden puts any sort of Strength 4 weapons 
at that major disadvantage of only being able to, to wound on a five and six. So you've already got your ballistic skill you're rolling against or your weapon skill, and then you have to do that as well. So that toughness five, just right off the bat, just makes them more survivable, that higher save. They're, they're more expensive, but the range you're getting and the harassment power that you have is just fantastic. And especially when you get a good grouping of units in front of them, they are safe from a lot of uh, really devastating attacks. You know, long range stuff can still take them out if they get good shots. But that's that's kind of the beautiful thing. Another really cool thing that I like using with them, for example, we're not talking about these like fully today, but I think it's an important thing, is this, uh, my will be done from, say, the Overlord. He can actually give a Dynasty Core unit within nine inches uh, a plus one to their hit roll. So instead of a three and higher to hit, they have a two and higher. Uh, just overall, really fantastic. And these are those kind of things that you're you're probably always going to have someone like this behind or with a group like that just to help. Or in this case, you put that on your uh, Necron warriors and you watch as they hold a position and kill everything that comes near them with the uh, Overlord supplementing them and the Royal Warden going you can fall back and still shoot and so they fall back they get a plus one to hit they wreck everything they don't even need to charge because everything's probably dead or next to nothing but as a side note one of the last things we should talk about is this right here and this is also something i run on my overlord the resurrection orb and i believe this is 30 points it's pretty expensive at least on this model uh, you can actually cause them to reanimate in a different time than they should and so in your command phase, they get to actually just reanimate again. And there's a special version of this. I believe it's the Orb of Eternity that their resurrection then succeeds on a 4 through 6 instead of a 5 and 6. So a 50-50 shot. And I had one time where I rolled it with the, the 4 through 6 in, uh, I think, 12 out of like the 14 resurrected. Like the odds were insane. And it was just my opponent would just jaw dropped. It was like, are you serious right now? I was like, I, yeah, man, I'm sorry. This is, this is happening. And so you can actually re reanimate a big blob of Necron warriors or even immortals. And you know, which one do I prefer? It really depends on what you're needing. The, the immortals are so good for harassment. Whereas the Necron warriors are truly the, the perfect choice to keep an objective from your opponent. And so they actually just, it's a, it's a perfect example of the right balance of these two troop selections have very different roles and they are succeed at those fantastically. And so that's, that's a good place to be that it's not which one to choose in this case. It's which one am I taking for what purpose? And that's, that's a beautiful thing. And about nine times out of 10, I play, I, I'm, I've got a big blob of Necron Warriors going to take an objective, and I've got Immortals sitting back on my home objective sniping things, harassing and still putting in damage, and then whenever the battle gets more intense, they can move up, because they're, you know, usually, especially in Space Marines, they're trying to engage in close combat, and the Immortals can move up and go, ha, now you're within half range, but I'm also protected because I have other things in front of me that you see you can't get to my Immortals. So then I get the half range bonus, I get my rapid fire stuff, I'll do all this, especially if you're playing Mephrit Dynasty, all of a sudden half range, lots of AP, lots of no light cover, and oh, if I roll a six, I get another AP, it's, you know, there's there's times where I have attacked with Goss Blasters at half range, and all of a sudden it's, it's AP minus four, you know, and Armor of Contempt reduces that to three, but still, it's, that's okay. You know, and really it's not reducing the, the AP, it's increasing their save, which is just weird. I, th I think, no, it's actually reducing the armor penetration. And that's way, if, if they have a plus one to their save, they can actually stack those things in a roundabout way because they don't stack directly. It's really dumb. And Armor of Contempt, unfortunately, they should have just evaluated a few units in each of the Space Marine stuff and given them an extra wound instead of doing this because then it really hurts factions that it was trying to like there were certain factions that were super super strong in the codexes in the game that, that like tau that could just wreck you from range and some of the eldari stuff too and instead of just giving an extra wound to adjust for that or reducing some of their damage or their armor penetration 
on those factions, they gave armor contempt to all of the the humans. So not not a great thing, but th- th- thankfully they fixed a lot of the stuff for the um, the Necrons. And so I've been Cody from the Keepers Nerd. Let me know in the comments below which which one you enjoy using the most. Uh, do you kind of do the same kind of thing I do where Necron Warriors move up and take over objectives and just hold them forever and Immortals sit back and snipe until they're ready to move up? Or do you do something else? Uh, you know, we haven't even talked about some of the teleportation antics as well. And that might be in another video in the future. But let me know in the comments below. Like and subscribe. Uh, I've been Cody from the Keepers of Nerdum. Take care.